हेलो नमस्कार 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 माय नेम इज पूजा द्विवेदी वेलकम टू माय क्लास टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज द जी ट्वेंटी गोइंग टू बिकम द जी ट्वेंटी वन अंडर इंडिया प्रेसिडेंसी इज द एफ्रिकन यूनियन अ वर्दी पार्टनर ऑफ द जी ट्वेंटी वाई शुड इट बी एडमिटेड वॉट आर द आर्ग्यूमेंट्स अगेंस्ट इट सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इट ऑल फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ योर फिल्म्स एज वेल एज जी एस मेन्स पेपर सेकेंड एग्जामिनेशन do not worry about making notes because i provide the notes through the form of the pdf that i'm using and it is available on my telegram channel that is by the name of pooja devi upsc if you have any queries regarding this examination you can also talk to me on my instagram please do subscribe to the study iq ias english channel to get all the important segments related to the upsc examination so these are the major things that we have to discuss of course what is the news is the main thing there are five major key takeaways we can call it under the presidency of the india for the g20 we will discuss that as well other than this what is the african union and the g20 a brief background of the engagement between the african union and the g20 because your examination needs background as well other than this why the african union is union is important for the g20 that also has to be discussed for and against what are the arguments and then a preliminary question so that you can understand how prelims work moving ahead with the news what is the news stage has been set for the admission of the african union as the member as a permanent member of the g20 what is the centrality of the african union in this the growing gdp the humongous population that it hosts south africa is already a member of the g20 why do we need to make sure that african union joins it because south africa may have its own economic aims ambitions domestic politics and domestic economic policies which it may not be able to represent at the african continent level that is why this is one of the major things on which the african union was pressing south africa is bearing the huge responsibility of representing such a large continent the second largest continent in the world and every country is different in that so if the european union can be a part of the g20 why can't the african union moving ahead there are certain challenges as well as features under india's presidency the first challenge is the russia ukraine conflict it has polarized the grouping the g20 has been polarized the war has remained a dominant part part or portion of the last g20 summit as well when indonesia also faced a similar problem the joint communique the joint declaration that has to come may not find a consensus over the russia ukraine war so there is needed a lot of negotiation india will have to do a lot of negotiation for the correct language to be used against russia or for this war the g7 wants a strong condemnation in the statement the joint statement that the g20 will give but moscow and beijing will be against it india wants to be neutral so we need a proper negotiation this is one of the biggest challenges second challenge is that not a challenge it's a feature second feature is that the magnitude and the vastness with which india conducted different summits different sessions of the g20 summit in more than 200 countries it has remained unmatched many politicians say many people of the opposition say that the current government is trying to iterate politics through conducting the summit or the various parts of the summit in these many cities but of course india wants to show its diversity why shouldn't it indonesia tried that we would also conduct sessions in more than like more cities but it couldn't do so so india has proved that it is capable of managing sessions of the summit at such vast level this is our diversity and of course more attention will come at the localized level not only at the central level so this is the second key takeaway moving on third is that india is trying to uh, push projects such as the digital public infrastructure of the success of the upi gender development multilateral forums climate change health and future pandemic use of technology among others 
how can india reach its own ambitions which are which should be line with the ambitions of the world or the g20 this is another challenge for india because we have various sectors to take off get take care of then fourth is the biggest complication for india is presented by china 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 as in china should have been represented by the uh, xi uh, by president xi jinping but the chinese premier li qiang has come the absence manifest itself as in china is trying to show that it is not in good terms with india although the president said that the stable relationship is there between india and china after he was questioned about his absence from the g20 but maybe the chinese president wants to show that the g20 is not worthy enough specifically if it is being conducted under india's presidency so this is a setback not only for india but also china the premier li qiang has to do a lot to bridge the gap between india and china through the g20 summit and the fifth one is the voice of the global south india has time and again iterated its position in the world as the voice of the global south the representative of the global south the global south is a geopolitical term that means on the basis of economic difference between the north and the south the global south is a grouping of countries that are either developing or less developed or underdeveloped and because of their economies because of the lack of girth in their economies is it doesn't mean that they do not they shouldn't be represented at such a huge forum so india is becoming a voice of the global south a bridge between the west or the north or the south and many countries have supported india as the voice of it so if we are able to get african union a permanent seat in the g20 it will be a historic presidency of india okay so i hope you understood what we are trying to communicate here moving on let's talk about the african union the african union is a continental grouping it consists of 55 members i have sourced this information from the official website of the african union so differences will be taken care of by the official website level and not newspaper level okay so 55 member states are there that makes up the african union the african union is actually a successor of the organization of african unity that was established in 1963 and in 2002 the african union was launched right now the president is comoros comoros because it could be asked in your preliminary examination for upsc 2024 make sure for 2024 you also get in line with who is the president of 2024 that upsc loves there are five distinct geographical zones central africa north africa west africa east africa southern africa so this is how it is represented the decisions are made by the african union assembly they are subject to all the input and representation by all the countries okay let's move forward and talk about the african union there are certain countries on the basis of their political issues they have been suspended by the african union suspended are sudan niger mali guinea burkina faso gabon among others because they are unable to represent the collective will of the people due to military coup now let's talk about the g20 when there was a financial crisis in asia it was found out that asian economy is very important because the world became more globalized an economic issue in one country could spill over to another country so there should be a coordination between the financial representation of these countries hence in 1999 it was decided that the finance ministers and the central bank governors will meet on an annual basis and they will decide on the most pressing issues of finances so it started at this particular level in 2008 it was suggested because economy is not just restricted to one section it is actually for more sections agriculture climate change sustainable development so why not we elevate 
this to a leader level. So in 2008, the G20 became a leader level summit. There are two, 19 economies as a whole and one regional grouping that is the European Union. Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, South Korea, Turkey, UK, USA, EU. This particular grouping, it represents 85% of the GDP, 2 by 3rd of the world's population and 75% of the trade right now. And right now, India is the president. Do you know which country will be the next president? The next president will be Brazil. Brazil will be the next president. And after that, the presidency will go to South Africa because it is a rotating presidency. There is a very, uh, you can say, a unique thing that is the G20, that is the Troika, the G20 Troika. This is a card of three countries, the present president, the previous president and the upcoming president. Right now, the G20 Troika consists of, for the particular year 2023, because India is the current president, in 2022, it was Indonesia and in 2024, it will be Brazil. So right now, we have the G20 Troika. Why is G20 Troika formed? So that the policy is in a continued manner. There is no breaks of policy. And the African Union's admission is the most significant policy continuity. How? Indonesia supported and initiated, uh, not initiated in a sense, but it supported the admission of the African Union in the last summit. And similarly, now India is doing it. Now it is very, you know, significant. This is a policy matter and this policy matter is very significant. That the last policy which was iterated by Indonesia is being continued by India. And this will be historic. So this is what the purpose of G20 Trika is. So right now, remember the Troika for 2024, it will change. India, Brazil and South Africa, IBSA. Alright, let's move ahead and talk about the background of it. See, as I told you that the Prime Minister wrote a letter to the G20 leaders to let African Union join the G20 as a permanent member. Under India's presidency, a lot more could have been done. A lot more engagement could have been done. So that the fence sitters and the naysayers, those who are sitting on the fence, should we let African Union join or not? Should we be in a consensus or not? This could have been taken care of much better. All right. But still, if the African Union gets an admission, the formalization will be done by next year only when the presidency will be of Brazil. But if consensus gets built, if there is a nod by majority of the leaders, then nobody can stop African Union to be a part of the G20. The first engagement that the African Union did with the G20 was through a summit that was conducted in 2010. Seven years later, the G20 compact with Africa was launched during the G20 presidency of Germany. And here, they wanted to show that we want to engage more with African Union because we cannot, you know, delay the arrival of African Union. Then, South Africa alone cannot effectively represent the whole of the African continent. This I have already told you. These are the certain reasons why African Union wants to get, you know, even the G20 wants African Union in itself. Now, what is the various, what are the various reasons that have to be shown? Because it could be asked in your UPSC mains examination. A good question can come. So, you have to understand, you have conceptual clarity to write an answer. With any country, if any country wants to engage, there should be a to and fro movement, a mutual benefit for those uh, particular two countries. If we are talking about two countries, it should be on the basis of trade, economy, technology, space collaboration, defense, security. These are the various reasons why any country wants to collaborate or engage with any other country. Here we are talking about on the country basis. Similarly, can be done for regional grouping basis. Why G20 should admit African Union? So these are the various reasons. 
first is the growing centrality in africa's economic governance right now we are seeing that african union is becoming a single market how because the african continental free trade area it forged africa's 55 economies into a single market since january 2021 and as a as an economic block it represents eight it is eighth largest in the world it has its combined gdp in trillions so it becomes easier to trade with an economic block rather than trade with separate countries there is ease of doing business there is uniformity of laws uniformity of rules and regulations that is why it has structured itself in such a manner so when african union has become more structured it becomes easier to trade because there is a lot of potential in the african union there are vital resources to address energy challenges abroad such as there are critical materials critical elements that various countries can trade in with africa these critical materials or minerals or elements can be used for electronic items such as smartphones electric vehicles laptop specifically for india it is very good and specifically for other regions also it is very good because we want to diversify our market we saw that during the covid-19 pandemic as we were dependent on only one country majorly on that country the supply chains got stuck so there is 64% of the eu's bauxite imports that come from guinea european union 68% of the cobalt and 36% of the tantalum formed from the democratic republic of congo 71% of the platinum from south africa and african union for was the first to make the case for the safe release of grains through the black sea grain deal and that grain was not only for africa but middle east countries west asian countries and other asian countries as well so african union has time and again proved itself that i am a worthy partner the g20 has crucial agenda items such as digital payments and right now we are seeing that africa is doing great in that the afr exim bank it has been working with au the african union on launching the world's most complex cross border payment scheme it represents 42 currencies since at least 2018 and kenya was the first country in the world to launch contactless domestic payments with its mpesa scheme as we know that india is already doing so good with respect to the upi why not collaborate with the african union africa's climate action over the next 20 to 40 years will determine the sea level rise from amsterdam to shanghai we need to ensure that policy gap is not there between our vision for the climate change mitigation and african union's vision that is why african union is a worthy partner see there are 13 countries that expressed publicly that they are supporting african union's membership permanent membership this includes us china russia india the uk france germany italy brazil south africa indonesia japan and the european union as well so african union will be at par with the european union naysayers are there and fence sitters are there first naysayers as in they are not they are either saying no or they are not sure what to say these include australia canada argentina mexico south korea saudi arabia and turkey so how will we coordinate here with respect to a joint communication is a major issue there are reasons why we should admit the african union is if we admit the african union as the second largest continent it will be more representative inclusive and hence it will become more influential it will also gain the g20 will gain moral credibility that we are representative enough because we will be now representing 80% of the planet's people more representation means more inclusivity more inclusivity means more influence but there are some some people who are saying no the purest they are saying that if we let the african union join some day it could open a pandora box the asean would want to join it as a regional grouping the gulf cooperation council would want the same the organization of uh, organization of islamic countries would want the same the oecd want the same so what will happen the influence of g20 or effectiveness of the g20 as a whole will come down another thing is that a few nations that belong to east asia west asia i have already told you that 
if africa has the capability to ensure its meaningful participation in the g20 on what basis this argument has been made is unclear to me because how can you let yourself think that a worthy partner would only you know first prove itself and then get admitted the potential has been unlocked but we need to ensure to explore more potential then au's entry could set a bad precedent globally the g20 is now becoming less influential that is why it is being opened some people are even saying that they do not want to let go of the nomenclature g20 keep the word g20 doesn't matter the brics is still brics we haven't even talked about brics being uh, you know called by some other nomenclature right because six more countries have joined so these are the certain things we have to take care of listen i have a prelims question at the last please stay engaged so the p2i batches have been launched they are a success when it comes to enrollment another p2i batch is there for 11th of sub, uh, september and these are morning batches atm onwards you will have your live classes everything is covered here not only the general studies but csat also is covered ethics essay language papers interview program and a study iq campus program if you are able to qualify upsc 2024 prelims you will be called to the study iq campus to prepare for the mains examination the lodging facilities will be provided by study iq please do take admission as soon as possible so that we can send you the materials so use the code pd live because when you use the code pd live for this particular uh, you know course or any other course you will get a discount for this course you will get it at 29999 only thank you so much now let's look at the prelims question with respect to the african union consider the following statements it was officially launched in july 2002 in durban south africa there are two parts to this statement many data is given all the data should be correct in your mind morocco is the only country that is not a member of the african union and it is a successor to the organization of african unity so what do we have to see how many statements given above is or are correct answer this i will take your names by the next class in the next class let me also take the names of those students who have answered the last question correctly because it is important so who all have answered it correctly uh, the last question with respect to pashtunistan kushal has answered it correctly thank you samarth mohammed sahil thank you so much simran has answered it correctly rasmith has answered it correctly so thank you so much you all also have to answer this question thank you